Hey guys, Brandon here, and welcome to episode two of um, Watch and Talk. So, I actually did record this with my microphone you muted. I cannot believe I did that, but hey, practice makes perfect. So, this episode is the second episode of Long Skies season one, and again, this episode is not of a name like the first one. This is just the second half of the premiere. So, um, the episode starts off with a, um, like, sort of a, a um, turn of events before the episode starts. So, it's um, the, the group of fighters, the seven fighters, um, Jimmy Die, Click, Anthony, uh, Hal, Karen, and Tom. And they are uh, re- they're inspecting an armory. And they never actually got into the armory because um, Jimmy kind of screwed up. It was, it was a simple... Um, his dog was as a distraction, and I think that was what I got from it at least. Um, and he saw his dog was in danger, and he was like, "All right, now I'm going out." And he tried to go save his dog and compromise the whole group. So uh, Jimmy kind of screwed up there. And um, then, uh, as the episode progresses, you're in a uh, they're in a neighborhood. So Second Mass moved into a neighborhood with a uh, field behind it. So um, the field is important. Just you know, it's important later um so then we meet mike so mike is a um african-american also and hal meets him while just walking around and he is kind of in the he's similar boat as um tom he has a son who's harnessed or at least assumed harnessed they never even there's no confirm uh confirmation he never said like oh i saw him he doesn't know where he is but he thinks he's harnessed so he says any chance he doesn't say but um Hal asked him oh I, I thought you were gonna ask if, if I saw Rick and he said no I I, I thought you would have told me if you did so um that was kind of cool to see someone in the same situation as Tom they're usually just I mean there's a ton of characters who have kids who are harnessed I'm sure like just background characters though but none of the main characters do so it's cool that they um introduce someone in the same boat as him um and then after they uh, went into the neighborhood, they have a group of fighters, uh, seven fighters, go to the armory again. So this time they want to go in the armory. Weaver says, all right, no, you didn't check it well enough. Go back. Um, so at this time, they replace Jimmy with someone else because they think, um, they, they, yeah, I think they either make him sit it out or they put someone else in. I'm not sure exactly. But um, they either way, they say, okay, Jimmy, sit this one out. And they, they say it's just because they don't want him to have to, you know, carry the heavy weapons. They need someone else who can, you know, really lift the um, the weapons. But it was obviously, and he knew it too. Jimmy knew it. Um, and then while they're uh, in, going in the armory, it doesn't show them outside the armory at all, but it's assumed that they just easily got in. And once they're in the armory, they, um, they're just walking around, you know, looking around with their flashlights. And all of a sudden, Click, um, Anthony's friend, just gets an arrow in his chest. Sorry about that, my squeak on my chair. Um, yeah, so there's an arrow just go, that goes right through Click's chest, and then one that goes right through his arm, and then they start shooting at each other. And I don't know who shoots him, but someone shoots... Whoever shot him with the arrow gets uh, shot in the leg with a gun from one of uh, Tom's group. So uh, then they have a discussion, like a, a negotiation, I guess you could say, um, between Tom and the group's leader, and... They said, oh, we're not, dr-. like, they're basically just kind of mouthing to each other, like, we're not going to give up. And then they realized that um, the other group had Hal and uh, Karen. So they eventually did give up and decided, said, okay, we're going to go with you. And uh, after they went with them, they led them through a path into, like, an auditorium type of room. And um, really, it just kind of, like, the whole um, trip just went kind of downhill because they were going for weapons and they figured it was a trap but weaver said no it might not be so um so it's revealed his name is john pope or at least his name is john pope i'm not sure if they do say it in the episode but um so apparently uh john has been or pope they call him pope uh pope has been watching the second mass for two days at least and he knows exactly numbers, exactly what's happening with um, 
just with the whole second mass, he knows everything about them. So Tom, he caught Tom's lie, basically. Um, and I like a big scene that I like is Pope's development. And um, he says, OK, everyone out. And this is after he um, he says, OK, how or, you know, he doesn't know his name, but he says he, he get, gives how to this girl, Maggie, who's the one girl in his group and says, OK, bring him back to the group. We want the 50 cal. We want the food. We want their ammo. Um, so sends him back, says, OK, you have an hour. So, um, you know, Hal tries to escape, but that doesn't end it well. So uh, she doesn't kill him. She just says one more time and you will be dead. So she says, OK, hour when you better come back. And um, then he sends um, Car Karen, the rest of the group die. Anthony and I don't know if there was another guy with them, but he sends them out and it's just Tom and um, Pope and they have this scene. It's probably five minutes I'd say and they're just talking about what happened before this like what they were and I really like the development like you see Pope's like kind of character of He was a bad guy before this and he's a bad guy now and But now it's more acceptable to you know be a bad guy like you can kill skitters and No one frowns upon it's not frowned upon but if back then you would kill a human it was obviously frowned upon. Um, and then uh, Tom tries to make a move on him by p pulling a gun on him from uh, his brother who's just kind of laying there. But Pope knew it, and he said, like, when are you going to make the move? So it was kind of, you know, a cool scene just seeing Pope's... Like, you get to see Pope as a character. You don't really get to be introduced to his his brother his or any of the other group. Um, and that's cool to see, you know, a new character development. Um, and then, um, Hal goes to see Weaver. So, you know, Hal's, um, he goes and says, all right, Weaver, this is the, like, this is the deal. <laughs> and he explains it. He explains they need the 50 cal, they need the food, or their group's done. And Hal, uh, Weaver says, well, fuck them then. And he just says, all right, let's go. And let's go as in, we're leaving this place. We're not going to go save Tom, we're not going to go save the group. And um, Hal was like, well, I don't care if you're going to save the group, but I'm going to go save the group, or at least attempt to save the group. Um, and then Weaver says, no, you're not. And he gives him to Mike and says, Mike, you're not letting him leave this room. And he just like puts him like two houses down or something. Um, and then when Hal tries to negotiate with uh, Mike, just saying, Mike, please let me go. And Mike says, oh, it's a shame that you overpowered me. And he just... He let him go, which is a really cool scene. He let him go and then went in the closet and pretended like, you know, he overpowered him, which was really cool to see because, you know, um, Mike is kind of in the same situation as uh, as Tom, but also as Hal because, you know, Hal's brother, they're really close. Um, and so after that, um, as Hal's escaping, he meets with Anne because Anne walks right through the door as he's walking out. And she was, and he was afraid, like you know, maybe she'd tell Weaver. I mean, I don't think he really assumed that she would, but she said, "I'm going with you. I can maybe I can help." And um, they both go, and Anne says, "Well, maybe if I if I help your uh, brother, if I you know, because he got shot and they have no doctor, maybe if I help your brother, will you let us go?" And he's like, "No, I'll let you live." So then you know he basically just got another captive, um, and then he says, "All right." Well, I'm gonna go rob the second mass, and he leaves um, Maggie, Cuball, and his brother, and with all the survivors at this point, because all the you know all this uh, all the of Tom's group is let back into the room, and um, so they're all there, and it's those three watching them, and Pope goes to rob the second mass. Well, of course he successfully uh, robs the second mass. He talks to Weaver, and Weaver says, "Well, I'm gonna get you back," but he gives him the food. He gives him the 50 cal in the car and they're driving back and um at this point maggie was you know back with them and um pope's brother starts to talk to karen he says get up i want to like see what i have here so it makes her turn around and it's insinuated that he's gonna like rape her so um maggie she says this is a really cool scene she says how long is he going to live to Anne? And she said, oh, yeah, he's going to. And then she just shoots him in the chest. Uh, she shoots um, Pope's brother, and then she shoots uh, she shoots Q-Ball. So she said they were both 
bad people and it's insinuated that he did something to her also uh so that's you know kind of a deep uh emotional scene sort of it wasn't like you know crying emotional but it was kind of like that um so as he's leaving the second mass group uh pope after you know robbing them he's walking around and from one side where his group was is tom and his group which is just tom hal karen and Di, maybe anthony and they were shooting um you know shooting at pope from one direction then uh weaver turns around their shoot so they basically have him you know kind of closed off with a group an area full of flares which they put so um the aliens would attack tom's group that's what uh, pope put they put road flares down um but it kind of just it was karma i guess you know uh, karma's a bitch and they put the, the flares down intending for them to you know screw over tom's group in that field which i was talking about earlier but then they're in the middle of the field now and um he says i'm not surrendering surrendering so then uh as the alien ship comes in pope gets in the car and says everyone get in but then as they're about to get in he just drives away because it was too late and the aliens kill all his group except for maggie but she's now with second mass she's you know fighting with them and uh he drives the car away and as he gets out <laughs> weaver's just like right there with the gun like one move and you're dead so that was a you know cool scene again and um and at the end of the episode, they moved into the school. I'm not sure if it's the school that the that Pope is in, the auditorium, or if it's a different school. But they they moved into a school, and um, that was cool because it, uh, you know, the classrooms are using it as like military stuff. And they have one as a cell for Pope, and uh, Maggie intends to join the group, let's take a mass, and prove her worth uh, by joining as a fighter. And uh, Pope is a prisoner because he spent too much uh, effort as a outlaw, as he said. Um, it's hard work being a criminal. <laughs> so, and then uh, there's the whole family, uh, tr you know, trying to, the hopefulness of it, same with the last episode, and they have um, Matt like, oh, are we not that catch now? Because he found lacrosse sticks in, um, in one of the houses. So now they're having a catch, Tom and Matt, and that's a really uh, touching scene, I guess you could say. And then um, they say, all right, we're going to look for uh, Ben, because Weaver says, all right, you you did the armory job. Now, I said, like I said, you can go see, look for Ben. So um, Mike, Tom, Karen, Hal, and Maggie now, and maybe Die. I'm not sure. But um, they go, and they walk off camera, and are going to get Ben. So um, this was a good episode. Let's give it a 9 out of 10. And... Uh, the one problem was they killed Click with the you know the arrow on his chest, the arrow on his arm, um, but they never really attempted to save him, and there was no story about like you know anything. They kind of just killed him off, and then that was it. There's nothing about it, and the beginning of the episode was a bit slow, so I'd have to give it a nine out of ten. You know, still strong episode, strong end of the premiere, um, but I think the first episode was just a bit better, like. Um, Action-wise, not so much, but story-wise, I thought it was a lot better. So, not a lot better, you know, a little bit better. It's still really good. Um, so, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Watch and Talk.